Hey guys, it's Tony Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking our first look at the Asus Sabretooth Z77 board. This is just going to be kind of a uh, uh, like a bolster part of uh, sort of like just a good look at the accessories uh, and the, the aesthetics of the board um, to kind of uh, complement Brian's full review which he will be doing um, because uh, Brian is going to be doing all the Ivy stuff, so this is just m me kind of getting a quick video out of this before I send it off to him, do all the reviews. That will be on the uh, main part of the website, so if, you are, if you're interested in buying this board or you are interested in this board and you want to see the review, make sure you go to the OC3D website and that's where the review will be. But anyway, um, first thing to notice, uh, it's kind of the normal uh, Sabretooth kind of Ultimate Force tough branding on this. Got the SLI and the AMD Crossfire X logos down the bottom, as well as the Virtual MVP, which is a universal GPU virtualization um, program stroke feature, which is uh, being done with Lucid. Uh, inside the box, if I move this down here, right, first thing at the top is the thermal armor, as we've seen with all of the Sabretooth boards recently. Uh, then we've got thermal radar. And this says that it uh, monitors the temperatures in critical parts of the board, automatically adjusting fan speeds for better system stability. So I'm assuming that uh, it will speed up and slow down the fans depending on what parts of the board are hot with the fans that are built into the board. Dust Defender, just saying that the thermal armour will actually help stop uh, dust collecting, but to be perfectly honest with your peeps, then you really kind of, you, you shouldn't be letting your boards get that dusty anyway. Tough components. Um, certified by military standard, certified for tough duty. We have noticed that these boards, uh, they are built for kind of stability and the fact that they're meant to last forever. But uh, we've also noticed previously that these boards have actually worked really, really well and, you know, kind of been there with some of the really good overclocking boards as well. So we'll see how we get on with this. Digi power control or Digi Plus power control, leading digital power control solution with the best quality. There's a Digi um, Plus for the CPU and the GPU and a Digi Plus for the RAM. Um, BIOS flashback, this is actually really bloody handy. You can actually get a USB stick and as long as in the root of the USB stick, um, I normally do it with an empty USB stick, but as long as with the root of the USB stick, you have the uh, BIOS file, you can actually stick the USB stick into a specific slot on the board, which I'll show you later, it's normally underneath the button, but I've not looked yet. Press and hold the BIOS flashback button, and without actually having to power the system up, you do have, you do have to have you know cables and stuff plugged in, but you don't have to power the board up completely, you can actually flash the BIOS. Um, so for example, if you get a bad BIOS flash and it's not posting, it won't start up, you can redo it with this. Um, for argument's sake, if you've uh, the CPU that you're using isn't supported by the board and it needs a BIOS upgrade, you can do it that way because it doesn't actually need to be powered up and need to use the CPU at all, really. So this can be really helpful, especially when you've got, like I said, like a bad BIOS flash or something like that. I'll read out what it says. It says, hardware-based USB BIOS flashback allows users to dry new UFE BIOS versions easily without even hardware such as CPU or DRAM so you don't even have to have the CPU or the RAM installed into the motherboard just plug in a USB flash drive containing the BIOS file and press the BIOS flash button for three seconds with only standby power I mean that's amazing I really like that so many times with you know things like this have come up um, also we need to talk about Wi-Fi Go which is built into this I'm not sure whether it's around the back I don't think this has got Wi-Fi Go actually, and this was something that Asus asked me to talk to you about. But anyway, um, but we'll open this now because now they've said about uh, USB three, and it was on the email that I received. Sorry, yeah, and it's not got the bio, it's not got Wi-Fi on this one, so I don't know what they're on about. But anyway, let's look, look. Did we talk about the network control? No, we didn't. Network eye control, real-time network bandwidth control with a one-click on-off button. The software currently um, in use is boosted to dominate the network bandwidth. So it just looks like you can actually change the, uh, the network settings and the bandwidth that you're using uh, real-time. But we'll have a look at the uh, accessories. We have got a um, uh, IO shield. Now this is something that a lot of you don't generally see, but where we got the, sent the uh, system so early, 
Um, that's actually the, the driver disc. Now, when people sometimes give me jip because I don't like optical drives, um, but with a really early system like this, when we first got this board, the, uh, none of the drivers or anything were on the um, website. Uh, so there would have been no way for us to have uh, downloaded the drivers. So we need, would have needed this to have been able to put the drivers on. But other than that, I generally just uh, um, download them when it's uh, after the NDAs and stuff's been released. Anyway, driver disc. Uh, we've got some SATA cables. There's uh, SATA 6 cables there, or SATA 3 cables, whatever you want to call it. And then some normal ones. There's also a tough sticker. I don't know whether this is a sticker or a decal. I'm thinking that it's a decal. I'm just going to have a look. Yeah, that's just basically what you do is you peel the white off the back first. Um, use the, the clear to get it in the right place. That's what they call the application paper. Stick it where you want it, press it all down, and then you can peel, carefully peel the clear off. Um, and uh, that is then, uh, you're just left with the actual vinyl sticker on there then. The reason why I know so much about this is I used to deal with vinyl quite a lot. Uh, we have... A, uh, I'm not sure whether that's SLI or Crossfire, it doesn't say, but we have a multiple card there anyway. Uh, does it say anywhere around there? No, I think that might be an SLI cable. Um, we then have manual certificate reliability, uh, which goes through the Z77 board stuff, and then uh, thermal accessories. Then the quick connectors for down the bottom of the board. We have the two 40 millimeter fans that you can install on the board. I have to say, I, I really don't like 40 mil fans because they have to spin so fast to be able to move the air. They generally always make loads of noise. And then we've got some uh, covers here, and this is basically just ways of covering extra parts of the board, covering the PCI Express um, slots up that you're not using just to be able to stop the dust getting in. But we'll move all of this to one side now because I know you want to actually have a look at the aesthetics of the board itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get behind the camera once I've got that lined up. And we will have a ganders like this. So I'm going to try and get everything straight. Uh, back a little bit Thomas there we go right so you can stick a 40 millimeter fan here and up the top here if you want you can obviously see the uh, uh, the memory slots there and the fact that everything is shielded move down you can see we've got a PCI Express 1 then we've got uh, the first PCI Express 16. There is technically a slot missing here, um, if you think about it, but it does mean that the second PCI Express is three slots away. So if you did end up using two of the Asus three slot cards, they will still fit together. Then uh, we've got another PCI Express 1 and then another PCI Express 16 down the bottom. Now they're 16 in length, but looking at them, they're only uh, wired up to eight um, times. We move a little bit further down. We can see here we've got a USB 2 there, but these are all external headers. So we've got two USB, um, three USB 2s. Uh, that's a clear the BIOS button, uh, but well, the clear BIOS jumper. Over here we've got uh, two fans, and then we've got the, like, the front panel connectors. What I'm just going to do, there's my phone again, is uh, tilt the board around this way. There we go. So that we can see that we've got uh, eight total SATAs there. And what I'm assuming is that we've got um, those two will be on the chipset. Uh, and that's SATA 3. And we've got four SATA 2s. And then we've got a further two SATA 3s, which are more, more often than not part of the SSD caching. Uh, the ACES SSD caching, um, and that will be on a separate chipset. We've got a USB 3 front panel header here, and then if I change the board a bit, look at what you're doing, Tom. There we go. No, this way. There we go. 
Then we have uh, the 24 pin power and then another fan header there and there's a button in there and that's the mem OK button. And then, in fact what I'm going to do is put that down there. You'll see in a second, don't worry, there we go. So, we've got the 8 pin power there. That's actually the um, ASST fan, which I'm assuming that's the fan for uh, this that you can slide in there. So that's the fan header for that. Then we've got uh, the CPU fan and two further channel fans there. Now, what we'll do is we'll have a look around the back of the board and I'm again going to adjust the camera. Do, do, do. There we go, right. So, on the back panel we have four USBs up this side, right up the end of the board. These are all USB 2s. There's a large open section here, but the, the fan's just on the other side of this, so that's so the fan can uh, exhaust out. Then we've got two eSATAs and two USB 3s. There's a display port at the bottom then a HDMI connection and then your, uh, an optical connection there for your audio. Gigabit Ethernet, two more USB 3s and then obviously your normal uh, audio um, connectors there or HD audio connectors. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to put the board on a different angle. Oh, standing on my uh, microphone. It's going to break one day. Right. Apologies for all the changing around, but I just thought you'd like to uh, get a look at it from this angle. So you can see inside the socket, you can see everything's pretty much covered up. The fan cable, by the way, you've got the 40mm fan that goes here. The fan connector for it is hidden just underneath, in case you're wondering where you put it. But the idea with these are, as you can see, you've got open sections so that the, uh, the air that's been blown around can still get out and the heat from the heat sink can still radiate upwards. But if I, uh, if I move this over here and put it back a bit, the idea is really that you, um, uh, you have a downdraft CPU cooler so it blows air at the board uh, like the new Noctua um, uh, L cooler that they've got. I mean, I tested that recently and it was actually a very good cooler. I was quite surprised how good that cooler was. Um, but say for example, say you've got that and then you have it blowing down at the board and then it's meant to, the air is meant to go underneath the board and manage to keep all the other components cool. In our testing that we've done previously on the other boards, obviously I can't really talk about this specifically, but in the testing that we've done on the other boards, it really doesn't make any difference. Um, the thermal armor side of things we still think or at least with the last one anyway it was a bit of a gimmick and the the 40 millimeter fans I can't see them really adding any kind of real benefits to this um, but yeah I mean like I said we will have to take you know, Brian will obviously be doing the testing but it is still a bit of a, a gimmick I think I can understand why they're doing it but I'd sooner rather have it all off and have a really nice just quiet system Things don't really get to the point of being hot to need all of this kind of protection, I don't think. But again, it's something different inside your rig. I know there's plenty of you out there that like it. It's quite military kind of styled colouring as well. Uh, Noctua fans would actually work with these colours. Um, also, the browns and the the um, or the two shades of brown do uh, tend to work quite well with white cases. I don't know why I've never really used one, really, when you think about it like that. But anyway, uh, that is your, our first look of the Asus Sabretooth Z77 board. Is this something that might be on your hit list if you're thinking about buying Ivy Bridge? Um, are you due a whole new system? Is this the type of board that you would like? Would you like the features? Um, how will you plan on doing it? Uh, one thing I would like to know, guys, is... Uh, Post in the comments underneath if you are thinking about getting this board and the systems and stuff that you're thinking about putting together with it. I'm always interested to read your comments. I always read every comment. I may not reply to everyone, but I always, always read every single comment because I'll get them all emailed to me and I will sit there and read them all. 
Um, so yeah, let me know if this is something that you are thinking about purchasing. Um, but for now at least, we are 15 odd minutes in now according to my camera clock. Um, so I'm going to love you and leave you, and this is Tiny Tom Logan with our first look of the Asus Sabertooth Z77 board. Out. <laughs>